thanks for joining us again, guys. I know it's been a little bit hot minute-ish. Yeah, we've we've not been on it every Sunday. We know that we're on vacation, as some of you have seen on social media. Um, but we've just had a lot going on, and <laughs> frankly. Travel. Well, <laughs> the worst service ever, oh, like yeah. in the last several, I mean, we haven't had good service in a long time. It yeah. seems like we found basically where there's not service. Yeah. We can't tell you where there is good service. We can tell you where there's not good service. So. That is accurate. Yeah. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, this week's install is a little bit interesting. Um, yeah. We have so. a little backstory on it. <laughs> yeah. So it's oh, but if you don't know who we are, <laughs> I'm Mike. I'm Leanna, and we're, we're the, the dry, dry campers. campers. We travel the country installing solar and lithium batteries in RVs for our other RVers so that they can become less dependent on shore power. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Stay tuned. So we have these really awesome clients, right? And I guess they feel like they need to, you know, in order to see us or meet up in the country with us, they decide just to buy another RV every time they want to see us. <laughs> totally kidding. Yeah. However, we <laughs> did our, get... This is our joke with them. So Max and Dallas, if, you were, if you've been following us for a while, you will actually know both of their RVs that we have previously done installations on. They have a Lux that we did way back when. December in, of 19. Mm -hmm. And then they contacted us in 2020 and said, hey guys, we really, really want to go out like and just be out there. And we feel like we can't really do that with the Lux. So they bought an Arctic Fox. So we went back out and we, we met up with them again and installed another system. So now they got two RVs. So then we get a random phone call. <laughs> And they said, hey guys, so, you know, we want to see you again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not yeah, what they that's, said. <laughs> that's kind of what it was. It's like, hey, we're making a deal happen. Um, yes. Do, do you want to, you know, move some stuff? Yeah. So, essentially, what, what happened is they upgraded from the Arctic Fox. And they also still had the Lux, though. They had planned on selling them. But COVID and everything like that, it was just impossible at that time. So... Basically, what happened was uh, they decided, well, you know, Let's they take wanted a, something different. A little bit bigger than the Arctic Fox, but something that they could still get out there and enjoy. This model is a, was it a 21? 21, yeah. Yeah. So, this is a 2021 Grand Design Momentum 395 MS, which is a really cool layout. So, if you haven't seen that layout, oh, yeah. you should totally check it out mm -hmm. if you're interested <clears throat> in Momentums. Yes. However, it was a little bit challenging for the equipment. So how about you tell us exactly what happened or, you know, what we moved? So the original question was, hey, can you move all of the equipment from both RVs over to this toy hauler? And I said, sure, why not? <laughs> so then um, it... Uh, We're as, breaking Pete in, right? You know. Yeah. So why as, not? Just, as the story yeah. unfolded, um, he had basically kept the Arctic Fox and traded in the Lux, and the people who bought the Lux actually wanted to keep the system, so they ended up basically just buying the Lux and the equipment. Uh, well, and they ended up selling the the dealership sold the Lux before we could actually get out there to remove the system, and, the and so the people who they had sold it to decided I want it anyway. So. Right, right. They didn't want to, you know, have uh, anything removed. It was all already intact. So we, we did have to buy that equipment um, for the install. But at the end of the day, it was 23 panels, 12 batteries, two 3,000 watt inverters, three 150-100 MPPTs, all Victron, and a uh, 712 battery monitor. Yeah. Um, just a little bit of a just, just a few things. So uh, there was so much solar on the roof that uh, you can't go from end to end. You have to, if you want the back half, you go up at the ladder. If you want the front half, you have to set a ladder up. 
and go up in front of the front eight or the rear AC. Um, it does have three ACs. Um, we were able to do it where you could still work, you know, have work done on yes, the ACs. Yeah. That's that's always a goal of ours, and so that you don't get shadowing, of course, but yep. or shading, I guess shading. I should say. <laughs> yeah. shadowing, shadowing. Well, so um, I got some messages from Max after the fact, and uh, he basically ran two ACs all day long, not using any batteries. A lot of people say, you know, a lot, there's, there's a lot of people that don't like the way that, well, I should, I should go backwards and say there's some installers and some, you know, so-called, uh, let me take that part out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in, baby. Call um, them out. Well, there's just some haters out there in the world, which everybody's going to have haters. We get that yeah. because not everybody has the same opinion, but there's a lot of people who don't understand that. Yeah, you know, have all the batteries you want, but how are you going to charge them back up and quickly, especially while you're still running loads, you know, and trying to live like normal. So that's why we tend to go heavy on the solar. <laughs> this one clearly shows 4,140 watts. Yep. Yeah, this one clearly shows, uh, you know, what they're, you know, there's, they're, they're just capable of so much, but now wait is always an issue of course in roof mm -hmm. capacity you know roof real estate is what we like to call it so this one obviously had the roof real estate but what was their ccc like uh just under four thousand pounds 39 and change um so the system weighed in at around uh 12 or 1300 pounds so they were still 2700 pounds to the good for ccc um he does have a a heavy Harley that he haul, he'll be hauling with him. And is he uh, hauling that in the toy hauler? Maybe. They also have a trailer that they usually carry with them that he has the Harley in. So I, yeah. I didn't get it. I don't know. On that. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to continue tandem. Um, it's basically the way he does it is, you know, he has a Ram 1500 that pulls a trailer with lots of tools and the thing in it. And then he has a, a Dodge truck, a 3500. Uh, with uh, like a ranch bed on the back, I think mm -hmm. that's what you call it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a flatbed. Flatbed. Just that's kinda, it. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, he tows the RV with that. So yeah. Um, but anyhow, yeah, he's still got 2,700 pounds of cargo, um, plus water and stuff like that. But and lots of places uh, for them to be apart and not in the same space at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that right, Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yep. So, but. Uh, when it came to the to fitting the roof was fine we were able to fit everything on there we did do one fun thing which was a um triple wide um uh, 990 90 watt solar panel which is actually three solar panels but they're all bolted together and then mounted down um there it's was like a, one big panel is pretty awesome yep yep it was um if you follow us on social media, you've already seen it. Yep, yep. So this is the rig that that went on. Yep. Uh, but all that went pretty well on the roof. And then uh, the challenges more so came in the basement uh, or lack thereof. So in the, is, is it an M? It is an M class, right? M MS. Okay, so in the well, M class. M6. M6. Oh, MI6. No. So anyhow, M uh -huh. in the M class, the, it's not a drop Z frame. So those are always challenging to begin with, but trying to find space to fit 12 batteries, two inverters and three uh, MPPTs, MPPTs uh, became a real challenge. So uh, when you kind of look at the front door, the stairs, there's a door and then another door, which the front mo forward most door is propane and then that other door, it was just a short little cubby, only maybe two feet deep. And then it was walled off. So we removed that wall and it went the whole way across to the back of the wet bay on the other side so we're like score that's 12 batteries right there so we got all the batteries in there got them all wired up and mounted down and then put all the uh, the shutoffs fuses and all that stuff right there at, at the front of that door so when you open that door that's where all your shutoffs are and also moved her central vac a little bit closer to where she's able to change out the bag yes because yes. she said where the location is was 
you know, factory wise, she wasn't able to actually get to that. And then uh, for, and then we have all of our connections right there uh, for shutoffs. And then we pop right through the wall and then that's where the inverters and then the MPPT is actually lined above the generator. So um, yes, it does generate a lot of heat. Yes, there are fans and other things in that were put in after the fact, after we shot this video. So uh, when we were doing the testing and all that stuff, uh, and then he had called us and we worked through some things on how to maximize the airflow in that space. So, but. Uh, yeah, so it's not necessarily like one of the pretty ones, so to speak. He, mm -hmm. He's always gonna do a clean job, but um, you know, this one was just. Three days. Get in, get out, and do it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one. It's all about the efficiency on this one. But anyhow. All right, have a great week, guys. See ya. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll stop acting up. <laughs> Hmm. because we <laughs> sorry I thought someone was coming out of there <laughs> I heard something I think it was just the thing whipping in the wind yeah it's good okay I have a safe so area for you